Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we have my romance book turnoffs. What I mean by romance book turnoffs is when someone's recommending me a book or talking about a book and I hear any of these things, I probably won't pick it up. I don't like being a Debbie Downer, okay? But sometimes I get recommendations from people and I have to sadly be like, nope. That's kind of like on my red flag list. I cannot, I cannot pick that up <laughs> and I feel bad. But there are very few books that are the exception to my no-no list. Like this is my no-no list for romance books. If romance books have one of these elements in it, I probably won't like it. So that's why I steer clear of them. So this video has kind of like three sections that I made. So first I have my hard pass section. So these are elements in romances that if I hear about them, hard pass. No, I will not pick it up. And then I have like a short little section of open to open to exceptions um, that I would be willing to find an exception, but I have yet to find an exception. You know what I mean? Um, and then the last section are uh, things I typically don't like, but I have very few exceptions to like the trope or the occurrence that's happening in the book, if that makes sense. I hope that that makes sense. Anyway, Let's, let's get into these topics. Before I get into the video, I just want to mention, by the way, I know that this list is going to have things that are not on other people's no-no lists, okay? <laughs> if that's the way of the world, everyone has their reading tastes. Just like I know I don't like these things, I know other people don't like things I like. Like, so many people have DM'd me saying they can't read Ensnared because it's about spiders and spiders are a hard pass. I don't like spiders, but that book worked for me, you know? So, like, everyone has their tastes. Okay, so if I don't like uh, some of these things that you like, please do not take offense to it. <laughs> and please don't try and sway me into liking some of these things because I don't think it's gonna happen, okay? So the first section is my hard pass section. Things that are big, no, no for me. I will never ever probably pick books up with these elements in it. First one is a trigger warning specifically for me. And that is anything to do with shootings or gunfire, like without any warning, if that makes sense. Um, so there are a few books that do meet this exception because I did not know going in. However, if I know beforehand that there is gunfire and shootings and guns involved in your book, um, I won't pick it up. Um, that's just from personal experience. I was the victim of a shooting in high school. And so it just, it really triggers me. And so... There are so many books that I want to read out there that I unfortunately cannot. I know Catherine Cowell's new release. I'm on her ARC team and I unfortunately had to DM her um, because a lovely friend of mine mentioned and she knows my trigger. Um, that's like the one of the like literally only trigger that I have besides the next one I want to mention. Um, and she told me that this was in there and I was like, thank you for letting me know. DM'd Catherine and she was so sweet about it. She was so sweet about it because I felt bad that I couldn't read the ARC that she had given me. Um, but unfortunately, that is just something I I can't, I cannot get over due to personal reasons. But then again, I have read a Catherine Cowell's that has a shooting element in it. Um, for example, I know Hidden Waters is a, one of her romantic suspense books. It's my favorite book by her. I love that book. It's five stars for me. But I know I'm very weird about it. I don't know how to describe it. But like if the gun element is like slowly, slowly brought into it, like it's a little bit better for me um it's not as jarring so for example the heroine at one point is like kind of like kidnapped by somebody like a gun is like mentioned or you know like it's i don't really know how to describe it and i love that book i love hidden waters but then shattered sea i really love shattered sea too which is the next book in this series however there was gunfire from like out of nowhere like the couple was talking outside and boom boom like pops and i had to shut the book for a little bit and not pick it up because that came out of nowhere and it triggered me so it's like occurrences like that happening out of nowhere or when there is a specific shooting setting um like I know that is in Catherine Cowell's new book so um there have been multiple books where if I've had to close the book because there is a school shooting or just a shooting in general um because it heavily triggers me and I'm gonna stop talking about it now because I feel myself getting anxious so <laughs> um just know that if you ever wreck a book for me that is like my big 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 trigger so and by the way my hard passes not all of them are going to be triggers just these two are like trigger warning things that i just can't deal with and this next one is a funny one because people laugh at me about it and that's okay but you know what i don't care because it is a hard pass no no for me and that is anything to do with sharks okay <laughs> and i know that's so weird okay but it is like 
so triggering for me sharks are sharks are my biggest fear i have a huge shark phobia i'm like getting very uncomfortable right now talking about it um but uh i've told this story before but long story short i had this reoccurring nightmare as a child um because if you've ever been to houston they have the aquarium in houston and there is a tram ride in the aquarium that is like it starts outside and then goes inside of the aquarium it's a tram ride and when i went when i was younger i don't know how the ride has developed since then or evolved since then um especially with its safety measures um but back when i was on the ride back in the early 2000s there was a part of the ride the beginning part of the ride that was outside oh, i'm talking about it and i want to vomit but i have to okay um <laughs> so a part of this ride um if you're on a tram the tram by the way does not have railings so you're just sitting in a tram with no railings by the way and the tram part of the ride some of it you go over this body of water Ugh. and part of it has an animatronic animatronic great white shark that comes out of the water and like goes like this like oh it's so bad it i'm like shaking i can <laughs> like uh it comes out of anyway and then he goes back under the water. Oh, I'm getting like dizzy. I can't. So, um, and then the tram ride goes on and you go through the aquarium, like whatever. I had a reoccurring nightmare as a child that since there was no railings on the tram ride, that I fell into the body of water, like the little fake ocean that they have in there. And um, that great white shark was real and he chased me and I would die. <laughs> like, like people who say that you die in your dreams, you die in real life. It's not true. That's not true, okay? I have died in many dreams, especially because of sharks. That, and I have been so terrified that I have been woken up um, because of how terrified I am. So, uh, so sharks are a big no-no for me. <laughs> not happening. Um, an example that I have. <laughs> mm. Okay, so this book by C.L. Wilson. Everyone knows I love C.L. Wilson's book. She's a fantasy romance writer that I am in love with this book no <laughs> no 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 and that is because um there this book is fantasy and so you have people with like magical powers and people that are shifters and guess what the bad guy shifts into <laughs> he shifts into a freaking shark <laughs> I could not like it was so bad but then on top of that there were some consent issues in here that was like no no for me the 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 shark villain man um ends up essaying sexually assaulting um the heroine on page and so that was like a double torture on top of themselves you know like no no, no. <laughs> i think i have a running joke with crystal from crystal's bookish life because she loves sharks okay she loves them and every time i see one on her story it scares the living crap out of me and we have like a running joke where i just send her like crystal like messages like ah <laughs> like <laughs> But it's so funny. It's so funny. Like with Crystal, like I love it. Uh, she loves sharks. She would want to work with sharks when she, like in future years. And I'm just like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> she knows this. Like we have a like banter relationship about sharks. Oh, uh, it's so ridiculous. So yeah, sharks are a big trigger warning for me. <laughs> so um, I will not be reading that H.D. Carlton book that everyone really likes um, because guess what? There are sharks in it. So. No. <laughs> the next hard pass that I have is where the disability or chronic illness is a in a book is um, hidden and or uh, the point of conflict in the story. I don't think it's okay to make like a disability or chronic illness a point of conflict between the couple. Like I don't, I don't personally like that. I don't think it's okay and it just makes me feel icky um, reading about it because that makes me think that my chronic illness and disability can be a point of conflict in someone's life and can cause a stir up or a reason for someone to break up in someone's real life and it's just i don't like it like it doesn't make me feel good about myself and so i don't want to read about it on top of that another hard pass is poor representation in any form of matter whether that be um disability um people of color like if it's bad rep i don't want to read it, obviously like no thank you another hard pass for me is x or other girl drama i honestly think it's lazy conflict if that is what the author chooses to make the conflict. An ex-girlfriend, an ex-boyfriend, or other girl, other boy, other person drama, like, I feel like that's lazy conflicts and the author doesn't know how to write conflict if you think an ex is gonna be the point of conflict. Like, I think that's ridiculous. I don't like it. An example of this is a book I just DNF'd, which is Huck Me Secretly by Odette Stone. This one girl is just sabotaging this couple's relationship and I'm just like, 
this is ridiculous. This is petty. This, it's not good. Like, I don't like it. I don't see the point in this being the conflict. It would have been way better if something else was the point of conflict besides this one girl meddling in this person's love life. Like, no. I know that other people will say, oh, that had angst, adds drama. I don't think so. I think it's super immature. And I know a lot of people out there would not even consider doing that unless their ex was like a horrible person and they want to warn the other person not to date them or something along those lines. But like, if you just want to get someone back and you're sabotaging their relationship, like, I don't want to read about that. No, thank you. Also added on top of that is girl hate. For some reason this happens in a lot of new adult romances, which is the main reason why new adult romances aren't really my thing anymore. And in some of these romances, you have the author writing the heroine like all by herself or doesn't have any girlfriends or friends in general because, oh, girls seem to hate her. And you see on page girls sneering at her or giving her dirty looks or not liking her, stirring up drama, like, why? Like, I don't understand why they have to incorporate that because I, I just don't like it. Like, why is that a topic point in romance books? Like, it just makes me feel icky again. Like, I don't want to read about women hating women. Another one that is recently added to my hard past list is why choose romances which saddens me because I wish it wasn't on this list I have tried I have tried okay <laughs> but they're just not for me if you don't know why choose romances is when there's one girl and then like a bunch of guys that want this one girl and she has this group of guys wanting her I prefer like cup grouping romances like when everyone's together but like why choose I don't know why I've never liked a single one. And I even tried with the Lady of Rooks Grave Manor. Y'all know I love monster alien romances, monster romances. I thought I would love this because it's a monster romance, but it's why choose. And I, the whole time I was reading this, I was like, why are all these guys after this one girl? I would rather have eight, like five books in the series and each book about one of the guys getting with another woman. Like, I don't, I don't care that they all want this one woman. I find that so unrealistic, even though this is a monster romance. I found that part to be the most unrealistic part was all of these guys just wanting this one woman. And they're just not for me. And I hate that they're not for me, but I just, I don't care for them. I want everyone to be together. <laughs> I don't want these five guys fawning over this woman and then like totally being for all of these other guys wanting her too, you know? <laughs> and then the last one that I have for hard pass is um, where somebody breaks up with their significant other. So the third act breakup is one person breaking up with the other because they're saving them from themselves. No. <laughs> no, this, I feel like this is another like cop out way for writing third act breakups because I don't know why a lot of authors think it's you need to write third act breakups in your romances. I love so many romances that don't have third act breakups because they don't need to happen, like they don't need to happen. Um, some romances they do, but a lot of times they don't, but they think a third act breakup needs to be involved. And I feel like the cheapest cop out way for doing that is doing that trope where I'm saving you for myself, so I gotta end it off here. Like, no, I want a man to act like Chuck Bass in Gossip Girl, where he knows he's not good enough for Blair. Like he knows, he knows this, but he would, <laughs> to literally anything to make her his regardless. He's like, I don't deserve her, but she's mine. You know, like I don't deserve her. She's way better than me. She is up on this high pedestal, but you know what? I don't care. She is mine and I am hers and we're made for each other. Like, give me that energy, please. Another example that I have is a book that I recently DNF'd or didn't finish. And that is um, Fighting Silence by Ali Martinez. I didn't even finish this book because this hero kept doing that over and over and over again. I was 50% of the way through the book and he did it a third time and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like, I don't, I don't care for this. So I didn't finish it. The next three topics I need to mention are romances that are currently hard passes for me. However, I would be willing to try more to see if they could change my mind. I have yet to find a romance book that is like an exception to these for me. Um, so first is a love triangle. I don't like love triangles. I don't like them. If you tell me a romance book has a love triangle in it, I won't read it. However, if you think based off of my other reading tastes that I would like it, if it's like monster romance or alien romance or other things you know that I like, um, I will be willing to reading it. Um, but right now, as where I am right now, I have yet to find a love triangle romance that I love that it's not a YAA book like Twilight, okay? <laughs> and even then, I didn't even consider Twilight as a, as a love triangle because Bella and Jacob who? Like, 
they were never ever 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 considered end game for me ever in my life so if you have any recommendations for these down below that you think i would like please leave them in the comments and also leave comments for the next two so um next one is cheating i've only read i think a few cheating romances and um they haven't really been for me because i didn't see the point in there being a cheating element in the book an example for this is love and other words by christina lauren the present day chapters when they're older she is currently dating someone when this guy comes back into her life and the guy who comes back to her into her life is the ma male love interest so she's technically cheating on the guy she's currently dating and i just didn't see the point of christina lauren adding that element in there like why did she need to be dating this guy at the beginning of this book. I, I saw zero purpose for it. So there's many reasons why I don't like this book, but that's just one of the reasons why I was like, why, why did that need to be in there? I don't see the point. And then the other one for this section is social media slash content creator characters. Like that is their um, job. I feel like it's way too meta for me. Like I just, I can't do it. An example was uh, Penny Reed's uh, 10 trends to seduce your best friend. Like there's so many like TikTok trends on there that I was just like, like internally gagging <laughs> like i just didn't like it maybe i would find something else that deals with social media in a different way i might like it but this one was a no-no for me and then a few other romances that have this element in there i i have not liked so and so the last section that i have are the some exceptions section so these are things i normally don't like however i have very few exceptions to these but typically i don't like these tropes or these topics um first is road trip romances <laughs> i don't like them I, I've never liked them. I only like them in uh, fantasy settings. Like I love a road trip romance in a fantasy or historical. <gasps> historical road trip romances, so good. Contemporary setting road trip romances make me viscerally cringe. Like <laughs> I don't like them. I think the only one that I remember really liking that's like an exception to this is On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. And that's because the characters in here were just so amazing. I loved that. But the road trip part of here, I couldn't care less. Um, but I didn't hate it. And it didn't make me this really cringe. <laughs> I've DNF'd quite a few. And I don't know why. They're just not it for me. They are not. Next is rock star romances. I've never really liked rock star romances. I, I've never liked them. Um, the only exception I can think of is the Full Tilt Duet by Emma Scott. And that is simply because the heroine in here, um, is it Casey? Yeah, Casey. She is a rock star however that part of the book is literally minuscule and that's the only reason why i like these books <laughs> and her like celebrity rock star part is barely even in this book so m the beginning of this one is more dealing with the rock star element of her lifestyle however this is like the only exception i can think of i've read many celebrity romances that i really like but that is because the celebrity part in there is this big make the celebrity part this big i don't know why it's just the thought of the paparazzi and all that stuff like i don't like that it's like reading it's like the movie starstruck you know like that disney channel movie that movie is like iconic and i have fun watching it rewatching it sometimes i really liked it as a kid but like his celebrity aspect in there like i have to like mute it at times and look away because i cringe so bad so i just don't care for them um but there are a few that i do like i know the silent waters by britney cherry back there I don't want to go grab it because I'm sitting okay but <laughs> that one the hero is in a band so he's kind of like a rock star a little bit um but that's never on page like ever like he's never performing or doing any of that on page like I love that I, I don't I don't like reading about that I don't know why next is insta love I'm not really a fan of insta love in certain aspects I do love faded mates so like if there's faded mates involved that's an exception for me I feel like there are little novellas where like I'll give it a free pass for insta love because they're little novellas like Cassie meant novellas like very insta love-esque um like the one I just read is The Stranger that one is very insta lovey um but I really liked it because they kind of like meet at this masquerade ball and they kind of like fall for each other this one night and then each chapter is one year later where they only see each other once a year on this masquerade ball and so their love just keeps on developing each year so i really liked that the other one i normally don't like is dating show romances like the bachelor bachelorette stuff like that i don't care for it which is so funny because one of my favorite romances of all time is royally matched by emma chase 
this one is takes place during a reality dating show because Prince Henry here is kind of like the bachelor and he's trying to find his princess on this reality dating show. However, he does not fall for one of the contestants. <laughs> like he falls in love with the contestant's sister who like tags along and is working kind of like behind the scenes. One of my favorite romance books, top five romance books of all time, maybe top three. Like it is everything to me, which so like this is like the main exception of all time. Uh, but I, I find them to be very cringy. This one, the filming part like the dating part filming wasn't really that big of an element in here so I did not mind that. I also don't really care for suspense or mystery romances because I, I just don't really care. <laughs> I don't know why like there's just it's not it for me and also I am a big catastrophizer so I think about the worst case scenario all the time every day all day and so normally with suspense or mystery romances I'm able to figure out who the murderer is pretty quickly and I just find there's no fun in that if you're able to like do it really quickly. But there are exceptions. Like I really loved the Tattered and Torn series by Catherine Cowles. These are like suspense romances. I've read all of them, but I only own three. So I'm holding up these three. Um, but these are all like suspenseful romances. I think I talked about them earlier in this video when we were talking about like my trigger warnings, but these were really good. That's because the romance part was just like everything. Not gonna lie. I didn't really care for the suspense part. Like I, didn't, I wasn't into it but I didn't dislike it like they were just kind of like there for me I didn't love the suspense elements in here but the romance parts in here amazing so um if you ever know of romances that are like these where the romance part is like superior to the like mystery or suspense plot line please give me your recommendations um so I'd be willing to read more it's just typically these are not normally on my tbr you know and then the last romance turn off that I want to mention is uh when the couple gets together and only last chapter. I don't normally like this. Um, that's why I've always been scared to read Mariana Zapata's books. I've only read one of her books and I didn't really care for it. But one of the things that I've heard about her books is that the couple doesn't get together really until like the very end of the book. <laughs> and that's not really my vibe. I love slow burn romances. Don't get me wrong. I love slow burn romances. But I want to read a romance where you're able to revel in the couple being together. I wanna to see a couple working through their relationship. I wanna see them interacting as a couple. I don't wanna see, I don't want the couple to just get together and the book ends. I feel like I have been so cheated in romance books like that. Like I wanna see the couple together and happy. <laughs> like I don't want the book to end. Like I don't feel like that's a great stopping point for romances. Like there is more to a romance than just the couple getting together. Like there is so much more to that. And so I don't really care for those. That's why I feel like I really love romances where there's a married couple in it. It's because you get to see the whole marriage process throughout the book. If they get married towards the beginning of the book, you get to see their whole, oh my goodness, Ollie, you get to see their whole like marriage in real time. And I love that, I adore that. And so I don't care for romances where they just end when they get together. Like I see, I, I feel like I wasted so much of my time. But again, that's just my personal opinion. Like I wanna see, I wanna revel in it. I wanna revel in them being together. And I don't feel like get that if they just get together in the last chapter. Anyway, enough of me being a negative Nelly, okay? <laughs> Let me know down below what your hard passes are in romances or your romance turnoffs or your romance no-nos. <laughs> like I'd love to know. I wanna see if we have any like differences, you know? Let me know down below if you have any of the same hard passes as me, please let me know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me like any red emoji in the comment section down below or like the stop sign. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.